Do you want to know how to create a lake house using the Microsoft Fabric REST API? If you do, I have good news for you, because all you have to do is go ahead and take a look over at Microsoft Learn. Then inside of Microsoft Learn, you'll be able to see the vast amount of things that you can do using their Fabric REST API, and it also connects to Power BI also. Then you just have to migrate through all of the documentation into where you create a lake house, come through here, look all at the request body, all of the responses. Did you get all that? If you didn't, that's okay. Let's go ahead and start back from the beginning and go through this together. Welcome back to the Pragmatic Works YouTube video, y'all. My name is Zane Goodman, and I'm very excited to be with you for this video. We are going to go through a basic uh, example about how we can leverage the Fabric API to dynamically create a lake house. And we're going to be using Python for this example in a Fabric notebook. So what I want to do is, if you want to follow along with me, jump into your Fabric environment as I will, and I will see you over there. All right, y'all. So where I am right now is I'm inside of a notebook that I have created in uh, a test workspace that I like to use for whenever I'm just messing around inside of Fabric or creating a YouTube video. And inside of this notebook, I have created a call to the API endpoint in order to create a lake house. And I'd like to go through it with you. If you want to go through this process, open up a notebook in your workspace and follow along with me. Everything should work for you as long as you have proper access, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Now, that all being said, what you have to start out with here is import requests, which is a library that is required for us to make a request to an API and then get a response back. So once we have this import request, we are going to then define our API endpoint, which in this case is going to be a URL. And this URL is pointing to a very specific endpoint. If I were to go over to the Microsoft documentation for uh, the Lakehouse creation piece of the API for Fabric, then you will find that you are going to need to provide a workspace ID. Again, we need a workspace ID, which I have set right here in between workspaces and lake houses. If you want to get your workspace ID, you can go to any workspace like this testing workspace and up at the top after groups in your URL, you can copy this out right here. And this is your workspace ID. So do keep that in mind. I'm going to go back over to my notebook. I already have this here ready to go for me. So that being said, what we're going to do next is break this code up into chunks. We could do this all in one statement. That's not how I like to do things, and it's not the best practice. So we're going to start with our headers. This is uh, a way for us to pass in information as we are connecting to that endpoint. And one of the main points that we need to cover whenever we access this endpoint is the type of content that we're looking for or the format of the data. And so for this, we specify that the content type is equal to application JSON. You can see here that I also have authorization. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But to continue on here for just a moment, the next thing that we need to define is our data. And you can find what you need to define here right inside of the uh, Microsoft REST API documentation. So when we create a lake house, uh, we can define, of course, the display name. And we can also define a description. I'm going to change my name to LH for lake house fabric. API YouTube video demo. Very long name on that one, but that's okay for this demo. And then you can pass in a description here as well. And if you continue to look through the Microsoft documentation, you will be happy to find there are also other data points that you can pass in to change the result that you receive. Then we create a response variable. And this response variable is going to take the requests function that we have imported. And then we pass in post. Post is a way that we can interact with an API endpoint. Post means that we are going to be making some kind of change, right? We're going to be pushing in some new data. That, of course, is true because we are going to be creating something new here, right? So we're going to make a post request here. We pass in our URL. 
we pass in our JSON data, and we pass in our headers as well. And then we have some additional items down here where we can print the status code and we print out the response JSON. So I'm gonna run this here and I am going to get an error after this is finished running. And the reason I'm going to get an error, and I know that I have one because I have a status code of 403. The reason I get that error is because I'm not properly authenticating in with my Entra ID here. And so thankfully, we do have an easy way for us to be able to create an access token. Now, the whole conversation gets a lot more complicated when we dive into service principles, which is a security measure that you pass to uh, some application, right, in Azure, and that gives access to that application to other Azure resources, right? And that is much more of a complicated go around to be able to accomplish that. But I have good news for you because my great colleague, Manuel Quintana, is going to be creating a video that should be out by the time you see this video. So if you want to learn more about that, go ahead and check out his video as well. To continue on here, I've left this commented out. So I'm going to uncomment this one out here. I'm going to come up and you're going to find that we have a wonderful library called Notebook Utils. And inside of that, we have Microsoft Spark Utils. This is a group of functions and methods that we have access to that are very helpful. In fact, there's an even easier way to create a lake house using Notebook Utils. We're not going over because it's better, in my opinion, to learn exactly what's going on behind the scenes whenever we are performing an operation like this. However, we are still going to use it to create a token. So from Notebook Utils, MS Spark Utils, dot credentials, import get token. I'm going to go ahead and run this here. Then we need to create the token. So we pass the get token function into a variable called token. And here I am passing in Power BI. You'll see whenever you look at the documentation, and I'll bring it up here, that you have a couple of different items that you can pass in to get a token. So if it's a storage audience resource, pass in storage. If you're trying to access or create a Power BI resource, you pass in Power BI, and that would also work for Fabric, of course. Azure Key Vault resource, Key Vault. Synapse RTA, KQL, database resource, you pass in Custo. Uh, and this is actually super helpful because we are actually able to use this to work with Azure Key Vault uh, secrets, key certificates, whatever it may be inside of a Fabric notebook. Understanding that, I'm going to go back to my notebook and I'm going to run this. It's going to create a token. And something that I find that is very helpful here is one of the biggest reasons that tokens exist, if not the reason, is for authentication. So it would be very interesting if I could grab a token and then just print it out here. But it's actually redacted when we try to print it out, at least in this fashion. So do keep that in mind, but there still is a value behind the scenes. So now that I've created my token and that token is going to allow me to access this endpoint and then create a lake house. I come back down here into my headers dictionary and I pass into my authorization a token that you have right here. And if I run this now, it is going to give me a status code that's going to let me know that everything ran smoothly. I get a status code of 201. It gives me a nice ID, lets me know the type of the item that I've created lets me know the display name, description, workspace ID, et cetera. We're gonna go take a look at that lake house being created here in just a moment. But I do wanna point out something that's very helpful with Notebook Utils, which is like many other libraries, you're able to connect to the library, pass in another piece of that library, another piece of the puzzle, and then pass in help. And by doing this, you can actually see the functions that you have access to like get token, like get secret, or again, back to that Custo example. Uh, so this is a really helpful way for you to take a look at what do you have at your disposal? And then of course, what kind of parameters or arguments are gonna be required of you to actually use those functions from Notebook Util. So this is super helpful. And by using this library, we're able to quickly create a token and then create that lake house.
So let's go ahead and go back over to our lake house here. And I should see my lake house fabric API YouTube video demo. And when I open it up, you're going to see your normal beloved lake house explorer. And you can come through and start to manage all of the items inside of the lake house that you place in here. Now, this was absolutely a video where we're just exploring a few different items about this API, but I'm making it because I would love to know uh, if you would in the comments, are you interested in more content about actually using the Fabric API? It is a wonderful resource and lots of learning can come from it, but I would love to know if it's something that you all are interested in. So please let me know down in the comments. If you are somebody who is watching this video and has no idea anything that I just did and you want to know more about Fabric, check out our on-demand learning platform where you can take our Fabric Analyst in a Day course for free. And if you looked at this and are interested in coding here in Fabric, but want to dive into it a bit deeper, then check out our PySpark in Fabric Notebooks course on our on-demand learning platform as well. I hope that you enjoyed this video all. Again, my name is Zane Goodman with Pragmatic Works, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.